Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. Today I want to share with you something that is very infrequently discussed, and that's the baits that you can use on a wacky rig or a NACO rig. Most people out there assume that the best bait to use is a soft stick bait, whether that's a Berkeley the General, maybe it's a, a Yamamoto Senko, whatever soft stick bait it is that you prefer is probably one of the absolute best baits to throw when you're talking about fishing a wacky rig or a Nako rig. And I'm gonna say in this video specifically that both of these are pretty interchangeable, but I wanna walk you through some various baits that I like to use anytime I'm wacky rigging or fishing a Nako rig, which is just a wacky rig with a nail weight in the end of it. Uh, they're very similar, and for the most part, these are pretty interchangeable. But most people out there just assume that this is what you're talking about. But I've got for you some other baits that you're gonna wanna try when you're using the Nako rig or the Wacky rig, and I wanna walk you through when these baits, uh, when I like to use these baits and where I like to use these baits because they're very specific to these type of structure or the locations that I'm fishing. Uh, before I get into these, and I'm sure you're gonna wanna see these because they are a little bit different. They're things that are not talked about all that frequently, but I assure you there's a lot of professionals out there and very experienced anglers that are doing this to their advantage. Uh, but before I get into it, I do wanna remind you that if you wanna support the channel, please use my Tackle Warehouse affiliate link. I'll put that in the video description. When you click on that, it, you can bookmark it at that point and any future purchases as well come back to the channel so you don't have to remember to do it every time. And that's very much appreciated, guys. The support, uh, every little bit of support that I get through that comes right back to making content for the YouTube channel. Uh, also, if you want a little bit of help in your local lakes, check out the lake breakdowns that I do where we provide 40 waypoints based on the specific season. I'll put the lake breakdown link also in the video description. Uh, okay, so let's talk a little bit about the baits to use on a wacky rig or a Nako rig. Now, in this case, I've got these all rigged up as Nako rigs, but you can uh, see that they'll work as a wacky rig as well. So these are kind of the five baits that I feel like I use on a very regular basis. And obviously, your stick worm, this is a, a purple, the Berkeley, the general, a five inch size. This is one of my favorites to use. This is gonna be a bait that I'm using anytime I'm going down the bank. If I'm just going down the bank looking for cruising fish, maybe I got some random laydowns, some docks. It's a great shallow water rig. Uh, works phenomenally well. You just get really good kind of wobble motion out of it on the fall. And therefore is really hard for a lot of fish to resist. We know that this works. This is probably the number one a uh, wacky rig bait out there is a soft stick bait. So that's pretty basic, nothing special about that. Uh, but let's move on a little bit. Now, just moving up really in size a little bit, this is a bait that we're starting to see, well, not starting to, but we've seen for a while now, guys, fishing on deep ledges. So this is a, a Magnum uh, Zoom Trick Worm. This is the red bug color, one of my favorites for fishing deep ledges. A lot of people assume that, you know, you shouldn't go super big on a wacky rig, but this is a big worm and this works extremely well on the ledges. You know, we've seen a lot of people, especially in recent years with all the additional pressure, the electronics have gotten so much better that ledge fish are getting really pounded during the summer months. And, uh, you know, one of the transitions because of that, that we saw is people started going with like shaky heads and dragging baits on the bottom. Well, the whole idea of fishing a NACO rig really came around. Uh, I think Brett Height won a Kentucky Lake tournament. There was a lot of big time tournaments that were won fishing a NACO rig. As you can see, I've got a weight in the end of this, a super slow fall bait, get it down on the ledges, and then you basically can fish it as, it's, as if it's a wacky rig on the bottom. But the Magnum Trick Worm is a bait that's gotten a ton of exposure for fishing as a NACO rigged bait down deep like that. So I really like to throw a big Magnum trick, uh, Magnum trick worm down deep. Now, again, that's just a, like a little bit of a variation uh, over a soft stick bait, but it's something that definitely works when you're talking about fishing the ledges. It's, it gives those fish a very finessey presentation. And because you've got it rigged as a NACO style, it falls 
rather quickly, even with a very light nail weight. <clears throat> Next up, this is one that I love to fish around docks. So this is a max scent creature hog. You can fish a lot of beaver style baits in this manner. I would say you want a bait that's got more of a flat bottom because it glides, but I love to fish a creature bait like this max scent creature hog by Berkeley around docks or even around laydowns. So if you've got, in this case, I don't have it rigged uh, weedless, but you could rig it weedless. Uh, I love to flip it around docks and laydowns and things because it just glides so well and through those areas. And the fish see a lot of Texas rigs, but they don't see a lot of gliding baits. Texas rigs tend to pull your bait straight down vertically, but when you throw a NACO rigged uh, bait, creature style bait into those areas, you get really good gliding fall through them. So a lot of times, if I feel like I'm fishing pressured fish, you know, if you've got a lake that's got a really good dock bite, a lot of times those docks get completely pounded. And therefore you go in there with something that gives the fish a different look. You can generate some additional bites. So this is something I like to do. You very rarely hear about people doing it, but it's one of those things that works extremely well. I would, I would state in this case, I do like to rig it so my hook point is facing the tails of the bait because I think this is much more weedless. So if you are flipping around, uh, lay down limbs, even with a, uh, a weedless hook, you want it, your hook point uh, facing away from your weight so that when it falls, it hits those limbs, the hook point doesn't get caught. Even if you have a weed guard on there, if it falls the other way, a lot of times that weed guard will actually grab the limb and pull the hook point into it. So you want to rig it in a manner where your hook point is away from the bait. You also, in this case, want a little bit larger of a wacky rig style hook with a little bit more bite gap. Uh, otherwise, you just tend to have too much plastic and it can overtake the hook if you threw like a finesse wide gap style hook. The next one that I really like to throw, and this is again, something you don't hear many people do, but if I'm fishing schooling fish, fish that are feeding on shad, I love to take a fluke put a little nail weight in the end, and then I'll actually run a hook through the back of it, just like your shiner fishing, right? You hook it right behind the dorsal fin. I do the same thing here. This bait will spiral and slowly fall, and it just is a very tantalizing dying bait fish look as it comes through that school of bait fish, and therefore the bass will pick this thing out, and it's a really good presentation, uh, especially when you've got fish that are chasing those shad, but they're down from the surface. So, you know, if they're breaking the surface, a lot of times I'll just, I'll just go ahead and fish a straight, you know, fluke, uh, or some sort of soft jerk bait weightless. And you know, the fish are on the surface, so you don't need to get down deeper, but a lot of times you find fish chasing those shad down in 10, 12, 15 foot of water. And in that case, this is an absolutely deadly presentation. Uh, it, and it's something that we don't ever hear people talking about, but I assure you that this will generate strikes because when this falls, it just is gliding all over the place, especially if you put a little bit of tension on your line. When you do that, it just like makes the bait just want to go. It's pretty ridiculous and it works extremely well. And it allows you to get uh, a soft jerk bait down to fish that a lot of times you wouldn't be able to reach without a weight. So you got to try that. The last one is one that my buddy Johnny Schultz pointed out to me, and it's something that works extremely well for him, and that's to take uh, a larger cuttail shad. This is a Yamamoto cuttail shad. This is uh, the six, what, six and three quarter inch size, I think. Um, but this is something that works so well around standing timber. You know, this little cuttail just gives a little bit of flap, and, and you don't need much weight to get this thing just to go like that, which is one of the reasons why I think it works so well in a NACO rig. You know, when you're talking about NACO rigs, you're talking about weights that are like 132nd of an ounce, 332nd of an ounce, very, very light weights. So when you've got a big bait like this, if you had big flappers on it, your bait might not fall fast enough to create the, you know, the give the flappers motion. But this little cut tail, you just need a real slow little fall and it just slowly vibrates just like a minnow tail uh, flipping. And that's one of the things that makes a Nako rig cut tail worm so good. 
And I love to fish it around standing timber, you know, areas where you have suspended fish that are hanging out. So around docks, floating docks can be really good. It's just that slow tantalizing fall that the fish have a hard time uh, turning down. And a lot of times they'll follow it to the bottom and eat it off the bottom. But, you know, again, with the advancement of forward facing sonar, we can see that now. We can see you throw your bait out there and the fish will follow it down. But this is a presentation that I love to use if the fish are suspended around standing timber or dock cables, things like that. It's a really good way to get those fish to bite. So the next time you head out and you want to throw a wacky rig or you want to throw a NACO rig, because we know it's one of the best fish catching techniques we have out there, don't think about using baits that are non-traditional when it comes to that technique. It's not just a soft stick bait technique anymore. We're finding that there's a way to rig most other plastic baits now in a similar fashion to generate some strikes. So give these a try. These baits are the ones that I use. I know they work. A lot of the other similar style baits will work as well, but I can't necessarily say that they uh, will work perfectly, but I know that all of the baits I, I just showed you today work great. So check those out if you want to give these a try. Some really good ways to generate strikes from fish that don't normally see these baits presented in this manner. So if you enjoyed this video, hit the subscriber button, hit the like button for the video. Stay tuned. We'll have a new one coming out tomorrow for you.